Hello, Amy. Hi, Sandy. How's it going? Great. Busy. Good. But I wrote the note to myself, good attitude and busy is not necessarily a bad thing. I've got to embrace it. Right. Right. Busy is good if you're busy doing the right stuff, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's yeah. a whole, remember that thought. Cause there's a little story I got to tell you about that too. Is there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's always a story, isn't there? Right. But it's exactly right if it's doing the right things. And yesterday I took the afternoon off doing something that I'm making a new habit is trying something new every week. I live in a place, Durango, it's literally a, a nature's playground. There's so many things, whether it's a new hike, a new, there's so many activities that people do and I hear about them and it's so easy to do your own routines. So I'm trying something new every week. It might not all be exercise, but something that's uh, for Durango. And so yesterday I went with two friends to, and it was new for all of us to the Nordic ski center up by our ski resort. Yeah. And I took a lesson and spent the afternoon skate skiing, which is, it's an offshoot from the traditional cross country skiing where you're doing the gliding back uh -huh. and, and it's a lot harder than you think. And it's a lot of work. Um, you actually cross the back of the skis are a little shorter and you cross your skis and you glide and you go weight to weight and you have long. Yeah. So it's a light cross country skiing. It's the same type of terrain where there might be little peaks and valleys but it's a different technique where you're gliding. And I would uh, most equate it to watching inline skaters that are going fast. You know how their feet, they're transferring weight. It, it has a similar motion to that. So anyway, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful day. It was a fun day with friends. Our husbands met us. We all went to dinner last night. And now I'm complaining because I'm busy on Friday because I pushed everything off. But like you <laughs> said to me, if it's for the right reason, and it's a good busy because it allowed me, I'm busier today because I took what work I had yesterday afternoon and I put it in a, a different period for me to enjoy an afternoon in the mountains. Right. So it's for the right thing. It and was for the right thing necessary. and trying and something new. Necessary. Yeah. So this trying something new every week, when did you start this? You know, I'm Amy, I'm going to give us credit. I think it was after I read the Atomic Habits book and I, I started logging and uh -huh. I was seeing a lot of great things that I was accomplishing, but I'm like, I need, what about, do I have any room to introduce something new? And I would tell you it was about then um, because I've got about, we're, we're on our fifth week, right? I'm on my fifth yeah. item because we, um, some of the things uh, participated in the traditional snowdown, which is their kind of Mardi Gras here. And they do a parade and kind of played a local with that, went to the uh, hot springs one day. And um, although I had been before, it was a new adventure with some friends to take in all of it, learn more about it uh, and enjoy ourselves. That was another one. Um, I can't remember. I'd have to go back because I actually log them every week. Oh, oh that's awesome. right. Oh, we did a walking tour. I did a walking tour. They, for tourists, they hand out a little book that goes, and we, we, we got only probably a fourth of the way through, but it, the little book they sell at the bookstore. And I had bought it saying, boy, you know, I'm not a tourist, but there's so much I don't know. And they take you through a walking tour of downtown and the history. And oh. that was really interesting. So this is awesome. So you've done it about five weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you have a plan for the like future weeks or is it happening just, you know, things that come to mind or do you have a, like a bucket list of things you're planning to do? You know, I haven't written them out yet. I, there's so many things to do that I really haven't mapped out what I'm going to do next week. I have yeah. a pretty good idea now. One of this one, what, what, I'm sort of being a little bit sporadic, but as I have ideas, I'll probably put them on um, my daily log sheet for, I have different tabs in there with ongoing projects and just to keep myself working. It's on my organizational Google file. I'll yeah. probably put things that are ideas, but it's interesting how things come up. And then I try to 
rather than say, I'm going to do three things this week, the ski skating, we planned it out two weeks ago. Right. My friends did the research. We hired the coach. And so I'm trying to time them so they're not overwhelming. And um, it's interesting when I allow myself to let things come up. She, the coach had said to us, um, you know, it really helps as we get older to work on your balance. And a lot of this is balance because you're shifting your weight. And then she had asked, you know, you know, Pilates, have you done Pilates or yoga? Yeah. And I had to pipe up and say, no, I can't do those things. I had inner ear infections as a child and I have bad balance. So I can't do those. And she looked at me and she said, actually, I think that means you probably should do those. And I had never thought about it that way. I'd given myself a buy <laughs> saying I get busy, so I can't do those things. And she said, my 80 year old parents took up Pilates and yoga at their age. And because of circumstances of aging, they can't be, they could say, I can't do it, but instead they're doing it and they're healthier and feel better and more stable than they were five years ago. So I looked at my friend, I'm like, and she does yoga. I said, Durango yoga, I'm in. So that <laughs> And it's good You're to so challenge cheap. yourself on what you say you can't do. And right. why, where did that mindset come from? And so I have told myself for 10 years, I can't do those things because I have this. Yeah. And, and you had a bad experience. And so you I kind did of dizzy just, easy, but, but that's okay. Make modifications because it's going to help my handicap. Right. Right. And I will just speak from Pilates experience. Pilates instructors are very in tune to stuff like that because they customize it specifically for the person they're working with. And so if you have um, something that's challenging, they'll start smaller and work towards the, the bigger motion or whatever to get you there. And so you can just be working in smaller increments, which is such like atomic habits, like getting us to do the small things that give us the bigger long-term betterness. Is that a word? Betterness. <laughs> I like it. I know what it, everybody knows what it means. Well, let's just put it this way, Amy, it's too long and it probably wouldn't work for Wordle, but you know, we could put it in a blog post and get away with it and just tell her nobody, nobody would know. Keep it, nobody would know. And We're I got all keep working you. towards betterness. <laughs> the habit of that I have kept up is I started my uh, Bodhi workouts, which is part of Beachbody, all the online. Uh -huh. And I've got my coach Hazel from Ireland that every morning we're six hours different. I wake up to her live inspirational video telling us what to do, coaching us, you know, our feeds. But I check all my little boxes and I'm on nice. I'm on week four of that. And so the yoga and Pilates, I've I've that's become part of my routine. I feel better. I'm things are fitting better you know, I'm, I've got more energy. And yeah. so that habit has helped me be much more open-minded too, from an athletic standpoint for yoga and Pilates, because rather than thinking, oh, I'm starting this huge thing, those incre incremental steps in having consistent workouts, even if they're 20 minutes or, you know, working my weights up and following their program, I'm much more open-minded to say, oh, I'm ready to jump in and try something new because of those little steps of 10 to 20 minute workouts that I check the box every day. Right. And consistent. Awesome. Good for you. We shall see, Amy. We shall see. We shall see. So if we continue our conversation about atomic habits, this, this week, we're kind of talking about making it satisfying. And so I was kind of trying to dig into your weekly thing. It sounds like that's a very satisfying to you, like your, your goal to try something new every week and you're getting it done. You're making it easy to do. You're doing small things, not big, overwhelming things. You're, you have a little bit of a strategy and plan to it to make it happen. And, um, it's rewarding to you. I would tell you, as you said last week, that making it easy, that habit was your jam. This would be my jam. I love, I like playing little games with myself that are fun and fulfilling. And, and it really is the, the satisfying to me is little rewards. 
and, and having fun, but back to my core values, you know, I always laugh mm-hmm. and say, one of my core values is fun. It comes out all the time, you know, yeah. it, it, and it's part of how I incentivize myself, making it satisfying. You could really tie back anybody, a core value that you have, they link with each other because if you make them happen in a way that is that, 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 that equates satisfying to you, right. right. Is living your core values for Garrett, it would be checking boxes on a list because it shows productivity. It shows progress on getting somewhere. And so he has to see progress, right? And that makes it satisfying for him. And it might be, that's a log to show progress, right? And steps to get there, but totally this having, making it satisfying. And I love creating community. So I am starting, I have started, but I have to start the content to it. There's an Instagram page called She is Durango. And I bring different friends. It's usually, it's women, right? There can be other people, but it's what we're doing to be a part of Durango. And and it will be a hashtag for Durango to even like if somebody's looking up Hot Springs or the Nordic track, I can then write about the experience and, you know, people follow their dogs. They follow different things. Mine is following really trying different things in Durango and hopefully promoting people that are either tourists or new. There are a lot of people new that are looking for something and maybe they'll stumble upon it and maybe I'll find new friends that I can take with me on some of these adventures. So look at you go. Hugely satisfying to me. And that would not be hugely satisfying to my husband, but, but it's very satisfying to me. That's a good (laughs) He's like, he'd be like, well, why are you doing this? And right. That's he knows, kind of, like, I'm, I'm just going to say I'm with Garrett there. <laughs> like, I'm I'm like, with this. like, this sounds fun. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that means you're putting yourself out there all the time. And so it's funny because I was writing something down about introversion versus extroversion with one of the, um, the personality traits that he talks about on um, 20 page 220. And he talks about these personality traits and aligning your, um, goals and what are your behaviors with your personality traits. And one of the it's openness to experience. That's which I am all for that. I'm, I'm, I'm there conscientious extroversion. And that's the one that I was like, all right. So, well, I'll go through the rest agreeableness and neuroticism. And that's like, if you're a worrier or not worrier, that's sort of, yeah, I'm definitely not so that one. these were like the big five personality traits. Mm-hmm. And I looked at each one and I was like, yeah, yeah. So I can see where my behaviors align with my personality traits that the ones that I are satisfying Right. You know, and that are so, but this extroversion, I'm more of an introvert. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I started my business, um, I set up a whole uh, plan for networking and I was buying, you know, tickets to these events, these luncheons, these networking events and joining everything to like build my business. And what, it was so painful. And I was like, this is the least satisfying thing on the planet. And I was just like, <laughs> like this is so painful and not satisfying. And so this, this makes me a little, feel a little bit better because now I get it. Like you can't set up habits and behaviors that don't align with your personality traits. Right because you're, it's not going to be successful. It's not, going to be like successful. it's not satisfying and it's not aligned and there's not so uh, quick story. When I was, um, at my CPA firm, I had made partner. I was first female partner. I had a book of business. There was no females that had that. And with females kept getting told the young managers, the young, you know, people that wanted to move up is do it like Sandy. That's when I really, got into strengths as a mechanism for, and that isn't necessarily, it pairs personality traits with your actions that you're going to be more inclined to have success for, you know, really how you're wired for talent. It's more the action side that to me uh, is paired with the personality type, right? And 
they were all looking at what I, I love to. So when you talked about networking for you, for me, it would be to show up and just talk to random people having no idea who, so there's a big networking event. (laughs) And I don't like to know who, I don't scope it out first and say, I'm going to earmark this, this, and this. I like a bit of serendipity because some of my best clients came from chance people that weren't. So the world of you can't have too many friends and speaking in front of a hundred people, like all that kind of stuff. Right. And what we worked through, we actually met for lunch and everybody did their strengths. And we found out that some, everybody had their networking plan, but, and we helped each other develop it by reading their strengths, being their accountability partner. But Amy, there were several people that they partnered with a really good attorney that they had a great relationship with and they created a five part series and they spent the time developing the program, putting it out there, getting the webinars, you know, a different, and they, they create a business by that because they were experts in the field and they liked partnering with someone. Um, Right. But anyway, everybody back to your point, it's not going to, everybody found out their way to be for it to be satisfying. So whether it be networking, growing a business, moving to a new city, right? This is my way to make it satisfying. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Go back to your value set, what you enjoy, what what brings you joy, and how can you apply that to make it satisfying? And the great thing about Atomic Habits is he makes things so simplistic. We, we, we overthink everything, right? Yeah. And a lot of these are just simple nuggets of look at yourself, become right. self-aware of what motivates you. It's the easy, attractive, satisfying things that are going to give you success. Right. That's so the flip side of all of that networking and thinking I had to go do all that networking is do then. I've got this small group of executive women that there's probably 10 of us, Omaha, it's like this Omaha executives. And there was somebody in it who invited me and we meet and have a nice dinner, maybe once a quarter. And that group of women, number one, they inspire me. They are wonderful role models. And, um, we always have very good conversations it's a very diverse, it's not all West Omaha women, you know, it's nice. from, they're from all over the city. And, um, and that that's, that's more personal. And so I love that. And I walk in and I know at least 75% of the people, sometimes I'm meeting somebody new that's new, hasn't, I haven't met or come across yet, but we've been doing it for a few years. And I'm telling you, that's my kind of networking. So and it's building my business. It's doing everything I want networking to do, but it's not going to random events. I'm telling you, I went to one event one time and it felt like a local, um, hookup meeting. And I was like, okay, I was like one of three women there. And I'm like, it was a, I, I'm just like, all right, this is not, this is not my game. <laughs> I'm can not I, here for I this. Ask you a question about this. Yeah. Cause I think this would help the listeners too. Cause it's a great it's a great story. So did, did you make this realization? This isn't working for me. So I'm going to try B or was it an evolution of just kind of knowing it wasn't satisfying and trying different things until you found the right one. How did you pivot and make that transition to find that sweet spot of the executive women? Um, it was an evolution. I will say that because I had never started a business before and everybody was saying, this is how you do it. This is what you need to do. It's like, do what Sandy's doing. You know, everybody was like, this is, this is how you got to do it. These are all, here's your punch list, baby. Exactly. You got to get out there. You got to network with people. And so I was like, so it was an evolution. And, and I, I will say also a little bit about finding myself and saying, all right, I, this, this does not work for me. I do not enjoy this. I don't go most of the time because I'm not enjoying it. You know, I sign up for it, but I know I'm not going to go. And so it's like, all right, just let's change this. I um, admire that about you, Amy, the, your ability to walk away from things or say things don't work out. I have a problem with 
because I can does not mean I should not following my own advice on that and yeah. not recognizing it's time to walk away from something. And then I have too much and I'm not allowing time for those other things like the women's group to happen because now I'm so full, I can't add another thing. I've gotten much better, but I have to really think about it. And I think it comes more naturally to you. And yeah. other people might be like me where it's like, I can't put one more thing, but you have to get rid of things too. You have yeah. to do a inventory and say, and it doesn't mean they have to be horrible. My point, my problem is I think I only ditch them, whatever them is the time, whatever I'm spending my time on, because it's a really bad thing. No, it, you should ditch the things that aren't satisfying. Right. Right. Unless you really need to do it. It's part of your core, your relationships. Uh, not everything we can do is satisfying, but there are some things that are choices, right? Yeah. Where, Yes. And it, so it has to be, there has to be a benefit to what you're doing in some way. And it may not be satisfying, you know, for me to be on a diet, this not satisfying. Well, uh, when I hit when the scale goes down, exactly. But the actual day in day out, right. yeah, you know, it's not fun. <laughs> so, but you know, this, um, the concept of I, and I know he talks about this in the book of, um, I, it's like this, the cost of good habits is in the present, like those good habits, it's not satisfying maybe in the present, but the cost of bad habits is in the future. Mm -hmm. So if you're, it may be satisfying the bad habit that, you know, eating the bowl of chips or something. In but it's term. in the future, you're going to pay for that. Right. <laughs> so I thought that was, that was a good perspective. Um, one of the things that was a light switch moment for me, uh, or a light bulb moment for me, <laughs> not a light switch, but a light bulb moment was this idea of goals and having goals for the, the long-term goal and which I am notorious for doing this when I set a scale goal. Uh, it'll be, you know, in 20 pounds, I'm going to go buy a brand new wardrobe. And so it's this big thing when I get this big goal. And one of the things that resonated with me in this book is having little rewards all along the way. And so yesterday I, I set it up. So I was like, okay, I'm shifting my thinking and we're going to go for little milestones to get me to my big goal. And I'm going to start celebrating those. And so I started identifying things that I want and that are like on my list of, I need to go get a pedicure. I need to like these little rewards. And so yesterday I hit a reward point where I could go get a pedicure. <laughs> and I was like, nice. Yeah, this feels so good. And so what I did is I did like every three pounds that I hit the mark three days in a row mm -hmm. that or lower. So it has to be like a, not a one-time deal. Um, I get these little rewards and because three pounds is so small, like incremental and easy. I love that, that it gets me moving forward. So my okay. coach, my coach, Hazel, and her program, you know, the, the beach body, but they call Bodhi, um, Bodhi, Bodhi, but everything is two pounds at a time. They won't even talk past that. Everything that we look at things I two pounds that. at a time. And it, I, I am the queen, Amy, when you talked about, I'm going to buy a whole new wardrobe after 20 pounds. My big one was I would pick something on the calendar. Um, back in the day, Garrett and I are going on vacation yeah. <laughs> and I am going to be skinny by and then yeah. all of a sudden that date would come and either, usually there was no progress, honestly, if I was to be honest, you know, maybe I starved for one day. So I felt like I lost a pound and yeah. this two pounds at a time, you know, I just lost two pounds and it's because that was the goal. It is so satisfying to me that I did that. And it's amazing how two pounds, you feel a little better, close yeah. a little bit. That's just enough that things fit a little better, that you feel like it's an accomplishment but two pounds at a time. So now it's two more yeah. pounds, you know, and that's the whole two pounds at a time. And I really, really 
uh, yeah, that's the, I never would have thought that's satisfying, but I, again, I, I'm finding too, a lot of, um, I'm seeing it in different workshops that I, I pay for that I do online. Um, they're really using atomic habits within their curriculum. You know, I'm seeing it. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're all over. They're really using a lot of these atomic habits and their success for this yeah. weight loss. And I'm seeing it in different workshop builds in, you know, I've got a, the website, you know, which I have been doing that a half an hour every day. And boy, that thing is kind yeah. of alive. Um, <laughs> Good for you. But I've seen that come along, you know, interesting to, uh, about the, I don't like to lose weight. I'm not doing it. The whole thing about it being satisfying. We don't like to do it. It always rubbed me wrong. I had someone who said to me once back in the day when I was uh, doing a lot of running and I would run three times a week at five 30 in the morning, which meant I had to get out of bed at five 10. And she said, you're lucky you like running. That's why you're not overweight. I don't like running. That's why I'm overweight. And it just, I resented that comment. It's like, you really think I like getting up at 5.30 in the morning before I get the kids ready, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and I'm thinking, no, it, I'm not keeping lean because I enjoy, I actually don't enjoy that. But then if I think about it now, when you brought up that comment, you know, that always, I, I always remember that comment because I'm like, I, I disagreed with it. Right. Yeah. But I would say I made running satisfying to me. I didn't get up by myself to run. I got up and met friends and back to that community, back to what I'm doing now to make it satisfying. It yeah. wasn't the run. It wasn't because my body liked to run. I found a way because I wanted to be in shape and I wanted to try to stay fit to find a community friendship fun. We do things outside. It was, it, it was a way to make it satisfying for me. It wasn't the fact that I enjoyed running. I yeah. enjoyed working out with other people and being held accountable by another group and having some goals together, which were usually some form of a, a running race or time, you know, there are all kinds of goals you can set around it, or we had babies, you know, and trying to get, right. trying to run a full mile. Right. Yeah. But we were there yeah. for each other. But the yeah. satisfying part wasn't getting up at 5.30 in the morning, no, getting up at 5.10 in the morning to run. That was not satisfying. What was satisfying was who was helping me check that off the list. Right, check it off the list. It was a community. And in that community, you guys were having conversations <clears throat> that supported the rest of your life to kind of help you process everything else going on. Because I, I have friends like that too. You you go for a walk with them and it's about being with them, but it's also about them enabling you to process the world together. And then you like leave it and you're like, well, that was satisfying. That felt good. And it wasn't just about the walk. It was about the whole thing. And the consistency of saying we run on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and a longer run on Saturday and yeah. knowing those are our days. And of course, you know, back in the day, it had to be email before text or phone call or a lot of coordination, which how did we do that, Amy? Without right. <laughs> how did we coordinate our lives 20 years ago? Because we were running. But oh, yeah. and I tell you, email, we did use email, but it was a little touch and go in the beginning. You know, group emails were not that. Right. <laughs> how did we do all this? It's actually oh, kind of funny. I have a friend of 20 years and I had to, I needed to email her something recently. And, um, I was like, I don't even, I don't have her email anymore. And I, it was the funniest thing to me because I was like, that's how we used to communicate before texting, you know, was phone call first. It was phone call, then emails. And then I'm like, well, I have to text her to get her email, <laughs> but it was pretty funny. <laughs> so I love this concept of like making goals smaller, um, and one of the other things that was discussed is we optimize for what our goals are, but sometimes our goals are more squishy and not measurable. And I, I kept thinking about that because in one of the groups I'm working with, we're having a lot of DEI conversations mm -hmm. and talking about diversity and inclusion, inclusion that is so squishy. Like, how do you measure inclusion? Like you can measure demographics and how diverse you're, but how are you measuring inclusion? And 
I so appreciated this because, you know, there's, we're having conversations like how we need specific goals. We need measurable goals because that's always what we've been taught is it has to be specific. It has to be measurable. It has to be attainable. You know, right, that, those smart, right. goals. smart goals, but sometimes they're not measurable. And if we're measuring the wrong thing, then we're going to obtain the wrong thing. So and I don't know what the answer to that is, but it's just a little like I appreciated I just acknowledging that not all goals have to be a number measurable specific. I love that. And it's okay to have them gooey and it's okay to take small steps and try a goal and make it a little small step. You know, yeah. You saying to me, just do a half an hour of your web every day. And I'm like, this is a good way to spend my time. And there was one time that I ended up doing it for two hours. It was end of the night and boy, that was a fun two hours. And I might've watched some shows or something else, but I got a chunk of it done, but I get a lot done with the little, the little breaks too. There's all different kinds of ways to set goals and it can be trial and error too. Yeah. And it kind of was making me think of your happiness factor because you've taken something with your happiness factor. That's a little squishy and a little, um, and you've kind of, you've put a number to it, Mm -hmm. which is, I think a really good exercise, but you've also in the process, you acknowledge that not everybody's numbers are equal, right? We have a different baseline. Exactly. So you can't compare one, one number to another number and goal. Anyway, I kind of, um, but that's a great point too, because the life wheel, which has here is where I'm at spiritually. It it gives every, uh, different dimension, health, spirituality, my, uh, life partner, my work, my finance. And then you have to rate where you're at with all those. I've gotten the feedback before. Well, this isn't that important to me, or this one isn't that important to me. And it's good for us to know that's kind of like a baseline thing too, like the happiness factor that we might be talking about our weight and health, and that might not be very important to other people. And that's their choice, but that they have a different barometer, right? Right. And we all have different things that resonate with us. We have different baseline and we have different things that are more, that have a more intensity of importance than other things, others, even in our time of life, you know, I think health has become more important to me and, um, work is not, but financial security has, you know, so things change in our little wheel of life too. And the intensity of what's important. Completely agree. And what we're talking about and what's, what's affecting all of our measurements and our numbers that are in our head, like everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Sandy, this was another lovely conversation about atomic habits. We're kind of wrapping it up here and, um, I appreciate everything that we've discussed and just the transformation of my thought processes over the last six weeks of going through this. Um, I do want to give you a little side note. I was going back through our podcast and last January, January, 2021, we were talking about habits again. And so I was like, not atomic habits, but habits. We were talking about habits. And so I started listening to it this morning because I was going to try to pull out some stuff. And then I got uh, interrupted. My mother called. So I started chatting with her. first. Yeah, I know mom comes first. So I didn't finish. But anyway, we actually did talk a little little bit about atomic habits last year. A book and prior to January, 2021. So you and I going through this gave me an opportunity to finish the book and actually dig in and get some really good habits and good ideas. So it's always good. We read good books, we get good insights, and then we don't always apply them consistently. And the really good ones are good. It's good to revisit and make sure we're applying it or getting new nuggets out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend this book to anybody. Yay. So thank you, Sandy. Thanks. Have a good week. You too. Bye-bye.